calcitonin is a passion. And, um, but you may think calcitonin is with the man it maybe has been described as a lot of things. Um, Calypso, some time ago, was suggested that it was um, for the lower sector of um, the community. So I would like to disagree um, with this concept. Um, Calypso is a part of our culture. Um, it should be educational. When you write the Calypso, you should um, define some amount of knowledge, especially to young people. Um, Everybody can have humorous calypso, it could be humorous. And there are different aspects of the calypso are form, but you must give a message. This is um, the object of um, calypso that I, I, I associate with it. There must be some type of information that you can get from a calypso. Um, so when you finish listening to it, you would have learned something from it. That's what calypso means to me. Is in me blood, I have the Kaiso in me. From since I was a tot, this gift is what I've got. Prince Ramsey, Dr. Ramsey. I know him as a child. Uh, I started seeing Calypso, as you know, at an early age. And after I started singing with bands, um, his father, used to come to the village. They had um, a tavern or a, a joint in Willie Keys. And his father used to come to Gray's Farm, Green Bay, to get permission for me to come up there and sing in the band. But my father never wanted that for me. So I used to go up there and sing, and there was this little red boy around the place. And he grew up to be Dr. Prince Ramsey, Sir Prince Ramsey. His love, I believe, came from back when he told us that his father used to run a giant in Willikies and he used to accommodate Calypsonians there, similar to a tent on a tent night, singing inside the giant. So he grew up appreciating the art form. I would believe that's where the love came from. And um, I know he did part of his training in Jamaica, so he knew what reggae is to the Jamaicans. And he know Calypso has been Antigua music from Thai King you know, similar to Trinidad. And I believe, I believe there is where he gets, uh, he got his passion to, you know, put, trying to make Calypso a world music as it should, you know, it should be. Not just when you have a little Caribbean party, but it should be out there world, world, world stage. Calypso is a part of all of us. You know what I mean? It's a part of all of us. And um, Prince, he, um, he's some Willie Keys. And um, he knows the tough part of the, to the tough part of life. And um, and the songs and the banner and all that come out there. So it's in his bones. I will see a little bit. Go, take go. 
over the country. As a, as a young boy, you would always hear over the years um, his connection with um, Sir Paul, King Obstinate. He was always somewhere where, wherever Calypso is. And I can remember back in the day when Douglas, uh, I, don't wanna, I don't know if I should say it was reigning supreme, but when Douglas was a prominent artist on the Calypso circuit, Back then, you knew of Prince Ramsey because he was there toe to toe, and then Onion, legendary Onion, those legendary four wins, you know, you know, Calypso and Carnival all that controversy, and you would constantly hear the bantering going back and forth. That hey, because of Doctor Ramsey's son, but all Doctor Ramsey really ever wants is to see Calypso on the stage and see it rise. And I think, well, now I have come to learn that almost. Every artist that is worth his salt, and even those that are coming, you know, has had some sort of input from Dr. Ramsey, whether it be financial or otherwise. He just wants to see Calypso and Calypsoonians rise and do well, so he, he takes a role. I knew that he was an ardent Calypso fan and producer too, because he had produced a few albums before, I think in the 80s for... Reading, Solo, Progress, and Jim. You know, and what Dadley Diamond, what Dadley Gold, I think. I know definitely of that too. I don't know if there was a third, but I know definitely Gold and Diamond. He produced them, and you have to be a real lover of Calypso to really put money in Calypso like that back then. Yeah, because back in the day, you know, everybody wasn't on record, you know, except for maybe the short church swollen off the net, you know. It was the advent of uh, Dr. Ramsey to have, you know, a lot of records being produced. And like I said, you know, back then, uh, I don't think, if they had records, maybe 45, you know, Calypso Joe, or uh, maybe La Tumba had an album. but. Since the advent of Dr. Ramsey, we've seen, I mean, you go to work, carnival time, you see endless records, and you go through, and you go through, and you just pick. Produced by Dr. Ramsey, produced by Dr. Ramsey, written by Dr. Ramsey. I remember them songs were blasting. And but I, at, the, at that time, I didn't, knew, he didn't even know Dr. Ramsey was affiliated with that until, until later on, in, in, you know, in terms of working with him. I realized he was behind all that. I'm a pharmacist by profession, so I met Dr. Ramsey at Halberton Hospital. Back in 1979, I joined the pharmacy team. And as a pharmacist, of course, you know, you interact with doctors. And I was doing junior calypso back in 1979, and then made it into the senior. And after that, Dr. Ramsey, who well, of course, the doctor writes prescription is one of the prescriptions which I had to read at the, you know, at the time. And therefore, from that interaction where sometimes you, know, you might see something on the prescription that you need to get in contact with the doctor. And Dr. Ramsey was one of the doctors that you know, usually collaborate and encourage the pharmacist. And of course, he talked Calypso. And sooner or later, I end up actually being one of the guys that he produced. Get on Oh, ah. Some stuff he write, write a lot of, it's a lot of Calypso. You know, I mentioned a couple of them, like Wash It and AIDS Prevention, and quite a few. Wash it, wash it, mama used to say, wash it, wash it, you hear it every day. Wash it, wash it, never play the fool, wash it, wash it. That was the most um, requested song that year. Wash it. Wash your pets do wash everything you can. And the way and some of the metaphors that he uses into the song, wash your this and that. You know, yeah, <laughs> that is an old way. And he made you laugh. That was, um, and of course, you know, only one man could um, um, exhibit a song like that uh, with full effect, and that would be King Obstinate, because you know he's uh, uh, he is the best in the world, best entertainer in the world. Well, some of the ideas he came up with would be humorous, and um, some would be like nation building. 
and some will be just to entertain, you know, because Calypso has to have all of that aspect in it, you know, and he's like that. Um, like I say, he's a very good thinker, and so he will think the topic through, run it by you even before he writes the whole song through, because he wants you to be involved in every, in every aspect of, of the composition. There are some writers, when they put down something, oh, it's ink, it's, it's an ink, or they say it's, it's etched stone. No. If you're not comfortable with the lyrical content, he could do it with a whisk of a pen. And he, he's, he's not stone-faced. He wants your input. Doc, well, you know, I'm not too sure about saying that. And he said, well, you don't have to do it, but you must always try to stay consistent with the message. So he's, he's a holistic writer, and he knows what he wants, and he works with you. He takes your input into consideration. Because, I mean, a man should not sing what he's not feeling. Or he should just become a vessel for somebody else's views. I've, I've been in, in, the, in the Calypso arena for a long time, way back to the juniors. And um, Dr. Ramsey's experience was a different one. Um, he's, a, he's a more hands-on writer um, from, from, from other writers I've had in the past. He makes you involved in the writing because he asks you about things that you're, you're comfortable about and, and so on. If you're, you're not into politics, he will probably um, put you more. But he's not really a politics man, because according to him, he never wrote a politics, political song before. <laughs> but um, he, he makes you involved and, you know, make you comfortable in whatever you, you, you are, you, you're supposed to sing. Dr. Ramsey takes lyrics seriously. When he writes, he takes time to make sure he completes a thought. He builds, you know, when people go to a Calypso workshop, they, they lay the fundamentals of, you know, what a, the way a Calypso should be constructed. And in his own way, being a lyricist, he obviously has to make sure that the thought is complete. All the different stages of the song. You have to have an introduction, a body, an ending, slash conclusion, and, you know, a dynamic conclusion. And I am sure that most persons would know that he has written maybe over a thousand songs because he's worked far and wide. So he writes all different types of calypso, social, political, um, humorous. I was involved with a beautiful young lady and she promised she'd left me. And me go by dark and I'm crying outside, you know, and he said, why are you crying? And then I gave him the story. And me go call her name, Patsy. And Patsy planned for left me. So he said, don't worry about that. Tell me what she's like. And then I told him and then he came up with this nice song. You're my girl, yeah. And I got her back for the next two years, and then after that she left me and gone to America. Got married to Bishop, on Bishop. You know, so Patsy's in America. So when she said this, she was said troops. But Patsy, I still love you. You're the one for me, and will never be ever dear to my heart. As far as I see, your coexistence, I know that we'll never pass. I have for you. My love, that is so true. You are my girl. You are my girl. You are my girl. You are my girl. Are my girl. Well, he's very philosophical, you know. Um, his lyrics are deep. Um, his topics, you know, he he likes to to. Um, he, he, he likes to tackle world events, issues that just doesn't affect us around you know, society, but worldwide. He works with this guy in Munster named Justin Hero, and when they call him, we'll call Hero, or he'll call somebody in, in, um, in Trinidad. He'll say, look, I'm not writing the butter. He's always writing. He can't give it up. It's going to take him to his grave. Uh, he writes very proper. You know, very proper. He, he would use words like I would prefer to bang up a word. Like, you know, give me on man, sit down and left on me, you know, stuff like that. He, he would give, it, give it to me, or give it, you know, something like that. He would use proper words. But when I get behind his back, when I go to record, I would just twist it in the studio. And sometimes he come to the studio to make sure it's right. I remember one time we were in New York and um, he flew in and was part of the recording session just to make sure that I had his right, which was very nice of him.
the first song that Dr. Ramsey did for me. Tell you how we go. I, I was struggling with this idea. You know, I was going to some um, spiritual, you know, things, you know, and I wanted, I wanted some help. And this idea came to me about this song about man being dust. And um, I was struggling to write it. Um, at the time, I had Daryl Edwards, you know, my former manager, working with me. And I was struggling to write the song. And I got in contact with Dr. Ramsey. And he, he, he told me, um, I'll see what I can do. You see, he said, look, I'm not really into writing right now, but I'll see what I can do for you. And you know, lo and behold, it's the best song I've ever sung. It's, it's my biggest song. The biggest song I've ever sung in Calypso. I, I always say, it. anywhere I go, any show I go on, I have to sing Man Is Dust. I mean, it's, it's, it's used in church, at funerals, you know, anywhere you want a spiritual upliftment. Man Is Dust is a song that, I got a call from St. Martin a few days ago. They're playing it down there, they love it. In St. Kitts, they, 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 this guy opened me show with it every morning. It's, it, I don't know if I can ever reach that stage again in terms of lyrical content, melody. Dr. Ramsey did that. The biggest song I've, he's ever written for me is that one, Man Is Dust. There's one answer I can find that would surely suit my mind in the world we should He's not only a Calypso writer, but he's also a producer and a business person, of course. So in 1980, Dr. Ramsey, in collaboration with Jagger Martin and Shelley Tobit, decided to do an album. And um, somehow, you know, being familiar with, with him in terms of prescription-wise, I was one of the choices in terms of putting that album together. <music> The name of that album was uh, What Dadly Goal. What Dadly Goal was the name of the album. It consists of myself, Chalice, Redding, Calypso Jim, Calypso Jim. And both, all of us had four and two songs each. Two songs each. As a matter of fact, from What Dadly Goal, that particular album, Chalice made a big hit in Trinidad with Nightmare Party. Uh, My Dreadlock Spanman was also very, very nice, very, very well recepted in um, Trinidad. Testimony, the, 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 the album was a, a good success. And Dr. Ramsey, that was his first, I, I would say his first big break in Calypso. And um, it was successful. So with the with Dudley Goal, you know, we, we got that difference in a more party type flavor. And it created a big impact. Everybody was just talking about with Dudley Goal, with Dudley Goal. And it was, I guess, the name also because a lot of people weren't accustomed to the name what Dadley. You know, it was just getting into, you know, the, 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 the minds and the heads of, of people in Antigua. And to come out with an album with that title, What Dadley Goal, you know, it was something special. Well, the first project I worked with, uh, with Dr. Ramsey was in 1989 when he produced my album um, called Awesome. And all of the songs I, I, I can remember, I think, was composed by him and Guy Wood and Giselle Isaac. So it was a team, Leroy Merchant, and um, 
to date, people tell you it's the best album Douglas ever produced, which I would admit and say yes. Okay, it was a team effort. And we had a lot of work to do, but it was done. And um, we went off to New York, did the recording at um, Platinum Factory in Brooklyn, and working with some um, musicians like Reality and Frankie McIntosh, and a white man. And that was surprising to me. He was a white man who was playing saxophone. You know, because the thing about West Indian and Calypso and white people, we thought they couldn't play Calypso, but as they say, music is universal. And it's written on a white paper with some black notes, and yeah, it was. And to date is the very best album I have produced. Moving smoothly in Carnival City When the eyes land on an African She awesome, she awesome I see something moving like it vibrating Awesome, I see something shaking like it pulsating Awesome In one of the other albums that he produced for me, um, New Face and that was when Antigua was going through all kind of turmoil. He's gone to Colombia, all kind of something. Man of practice medicine without a qualification and license. And all of that was happening. And then he came up with this thing, let's give Antigua a new face. To have a new direction and a new focus. You know what I mean? To, to, to paint a positive picture because there was so much negative at the time going on about this country. And hence he came up with this idea, which was well received. You know. Ammunition for Colombia, body drop at hell. I told them you might be for well. Another outrageous scandal will affect us all. We are heading for a fall. Antigans, you need to control your greed. I don't like what your debt is saying. I don't like how politicians behaving. No, no, no. Let's give Antigua a new face. Revive some hopes and dreams in this place. Let's take another direction. My fondest memory of working to, with Doc is on our way to Atlanta, where we had Heels, Surpriser, Absinet, Short Shirt, and a whole band from Antigua. And when we got to Miami, everybody said, wait, who are we going to tell them immigration people, boy? One man say you go wedding, man, one man say you go funeral, but then if the man dead yet, Absinet say, well, he'll go home because he's on green card. So we all boarded the flight in Miami. When we got to Atlanta, well, Short Shirt couldn't leave. Miami because there was some problem with him. And so we left him in Miami. We went over to Atlanta and Absinthe saying, Doc, me tell you that the whole Barabbas shouldn't walk with thee. But the biggest joke of that is when we went to practice now and the engineer from Antigua couldn't get no sound in the board. And Absinthe is saying, look, call the white man because he met them. And Absinthe say, Ralph, get over here. It seems to be a problem. And he said, what's the problem? No sound in the speaker. So the white man went to, we say, ah, let me see the board. Boop, oh, the mute button was on. Yeah? And everybody just said, what? And he didn't know that? Maybe the place meant big, so he get frightened, you know? But we had fun, and that is one of my fondest memory. It was when we went and we traveled together. Well, I, meet, I met Sir Prince basically as a doctor, a doctor at first, but getting involved with him was after I entered the Calypso competition in 1991. I won the crown and then he told me that he would love to do some work with me the, the year after, which was 1992. So we got together and produced an album, Party Vibes. Well, it afforded me the opportunity to meet some of the best 
musician in the Calypso world. Frankie McIntosh, Errol Ince, George Victory, Sunshine, just to name a few. Some of the best musicians and they're the most humble musicians and they've taught me a few things. Charles Dougherty, they taught me that, you know, like, to actually go out there, you must go out with your best foot forward. So the best musician was chosen to do that album. conflict and disagreement. There was a time when we had a disagreement as to the name of a song. Because I basically used to write, say, all of my songs except one or two songs that they might have brought to me, that the Prince might have sent to me, a verse and a course, and then I would develop the song. And I wrote a song I used to call The Promise which to me that name sounds more poetic you know and when the album jacket came back with the name of the songs and the order in which they are to be the name on the album was promise me and i said man i don't like that name promise me because i am saying promise me as a black man you will always respect your race. All I wanted was a promise. Just make me the promise, you know? And he told me, well, are you saying promise me? And I say, I don't want the song to carry that name. The name of the song is the promise. I wrote it. That's the name of my song. And he still let it go to you like that. And I took a friend of mine with me to check him because the friend was the one who transported me and he was in the room with us his calypso name is the elephant the brother of tiger lion and leopard and out of the blue he sided with sir prince because sir prince was sir prince so when we when we went outside i said hey next time you hear me and you go any place and any argument come up you play dummy they said nothing because you just side with people because of people. You're not siding with people because they are right or anything. You're siding with them because of name. So I told him, never you intervene in anything I have to do again. Never, never. So, so you know, but otherwise than that, we had some fun time, especially in the studios in, um, in New York. You know, we had some real fun time. I benefited for a long time and in about 1994, in about 1994, um, my career, like coming to a halt, wasn't as, as vibrant and at that point I needed an injection and I know Prince has been, you know, doing a lot of stuff with a few Calypsonians around the place, but never real, you know, heavyweight. So 
I saw the opportunity to, to ask him if he'd be kind enough to, to work with me, collaborate with me, do what he has to do, and bring me aboard. You know, because he's, he's a great um, producer too. He's also a producer, an executive producer. So he was willing to, and we got together and we came up with CD uh, 40 years. That was my 40th year anniversary. After 40 years, I still buy. But there was one before that. We did one CD, one album before that um, didn't hit. Uh, album called Believe. But um, when he really had been and really managed me is um, when we did that other CD with, um, we did Wash It, Wash It and AIDS Prevention and Sugar Bowl and yeah, a few hits. And I don't need one that leaks, that wash only once a week. I'm searching every island for a sugar bowl. Now then that not call about and leave the rust in your mouth. I'm searching every island for a sugar bowl. We um we were discussing, you know, the album one day. We were in his office, in his office, and um, I was very strong-headed, what I wanted to do. But um, he saw it a different way. I don't even know if you remember. If he remember, uh, he saw it a different way. But I tell him, no, this is the way it should be. And he stammed out the office and said, let me go look for my wife, see? And left I could live so long. <laughs> so he said, go look for your wife, and I could live so long. But you know, we called later on and we made that up. But um, any, anything that he stood for was really for better. You know, it was like trying it this way. And sometimes, you know, in your old ways, you know, and hard to, to turn. But um, we, we worked well together, worked well together. And you'd have to worry about it. If he's going to work with you, he works with you. Whether, you know, whether it's financial or getting the bookings, making sure that they get paid. He's a very principled man. And um, I admire that about him. In everybody's opinion, I have been probably the most successful um, artist that he, he've ever worked with. In um, 97, I guess, uh, before, prior to that year, when I went solo, um, I approached him about being my manager. And um, he was very, well, he was, he was one that was, he was the only one that was very willing to assist me at the time because I have had um, meetings and consultations with other entities um, to acquire their help in management. And he was the only one that was very, very, very willing to, to take up the mantle. And from then, he has become a friend, a brother, uncle, father, everything he wanted, you know, and we have that, we have had that not only musical relationship, we have had that very friendly relationship. And I find, um, in all honesty, he's probably the most honest person I've ever met. Um, when he, when, we, when I embarked on um, Crazy Man, he was one, the one to encourage me to enter the Carlos competition, which was not 
on my plate, which was never in my plate. And when Crazy Man took off, you know, and I went to do the tents, he took number one in all the tents every, every, you know, as, we, as we go along. Crazy Man went on, we won the competition, then we came back again, and he, the, uh, from since then, all of my competition songs have been written by Dr. Ramsey. And also, I'd like to say, he's probably one of the best writers. And the biggest song as a local competition Calypso song have ever been Stand Up Antigua, which was written by him and probably still will be a song that will be remembered. Like, you know, it's gonna be hard for another song to become national, a national anthem like that. This is what I got from Antigua Barbuda when that song came out and we really got the gist of it. This is what I got. For once, we got Antigua to do this. Dr. Ram, his writing is more of um, reality and more educational than anything. Because even for Stand Up Antigua, um, the song is basically saying that everybody else um, will pick up their country. It doesn't matter where they go. Even if they leave their, their, their country and they go somewhere else and life is hard back, back where they're from, they're still basically saying that their country is still the best because it's still their country. So what the song is saying to Antiguans, if they can go somewhere else and big up their country, Antiguans should do the same. Men with their political agenda. And one of the biggest songs, another big song you have ever written is Criteria. And that is, up to now in my set, that is still, like if I do that song in a set, I will the people pull it up like four, five, six, seven, eight times. I never even get a chance to do the whole song properly for them to pull up. So that is one of the biggest songs. I can sing, but that alone shouldn't make me win the king. In 97 they say, a true Calypsonian should never sing too fast tunes in the competition. It's foolish to say chatting, they don't study the criteria for judging. Ay, ay, ay. That's my favorite fucking onion, you know. They don't know the criteria. That's why he will always win the crown because he got the criteria down pat. Sweet melody, lyrics, great voice. Dr. Ramsey, great writer. Your diction must be good and have clarity and sing in proper time and key. When the calypso have no rhythm or rhyme and the same melody all the time all wrong. The music was well arranged and catchy so that the, the even criteria, the lyrics, most some of them call on up to now don't even know the criteria. You know? And this, I'm gonna tell them look when when they say that I won in ninety seven with two fast songs, criteria saying you can't say that I, I can't wait two fast songs. Uh, the criteria doesn't um, say your tempo should be fast or slow. Is is the is the, the developer topic. You sing about a dog, a dog goes on the road. A man kick the dog. The owner for the dog rush the man. The man run. You know, it's, it's develop a topic. And that is what Kwaiti is about. And then there's family. Most basically saying, um, basically focusing on one Caribbean. OECS and the one Caribbean. That's what it was. But I think too that Dr. Ramsey, he writes ahead of his time. Just like family, people never saw it. But he actually came through because people didn't see the song. And his song is saying like, people will say like, your yeah, bang water come here. And the song is basically also saying that, time enough, we get away from that. When you leave from here and go, oh, another car in there, and, and uh, that person is supposed to tell you bang water come here, because we're supposed to be one, and one, like one island then.
come I started back in 2001. It might have been maybe 2003, four, there about. Um, well, we started talking because, as I said earlier, he's my doctor. But in addition to that, he took an interest. And he was kind of concerned about the way I go about doing my Calypso. Because my writers, my producers, and so on, they're from Trinidad. And he was always concerned, Carl, you sure you're not spending too much? Because obviously, he would have known from experience and his work with Opsi and the other greats how much Calypso would have cost him personally. And I'm, I'm telling you, I hear people talk about all kind of substance. I, I, I shudder to think there are a few things that are more addictive than Calypso. Seriously, you will spend your fortune in Calypso just trying to get it right, to be out there. And, and he knows that firsthand. Right? So he was concerned that you're sure you're not spending too much, you know. Try, don't make the same mistakes I made. But he loves it, so he still continues to spend in Calypso. So he was concerned about that and how much I was spending. And that is where the real conversation came about, to the point where he offered to assist me, not just financially, but in getting songs, doing something in the local scene. And that is when we did something for independence. Ah, it was 2004, because I think that is when they had the homecoming, first homecoming independence. And they made the theme, Come Home, Come Home. And that was my first um, project in September. November 1, 2004. Mark that tongue on your calendar. Whether you're in New York or in London, I want you to fly back straight to Antigua. Come home, come home, come home for independence. Come celebrate and dance. Every jump and dance. 23 years now have gone. Since we nation, Antigua was born. So Antigua, wherever you might be, come celebrate the 23rd anniversary. He works very different to the way I normally do Calypso. For example, if I'm doing a pan piece, I might do the melody or Booksy Sharp, whichever the team that is you know, doing the project. We would normally start with the melody and then put the flesh on it. But now Dr. Ramsey... I don't know if he plays an instrument. I don't think so. He's a writer. He's, into lyri he's a lyricist, let's put it that way. And he does the lyrics. And then we would send to Hero, or he has a host of other people who do melodies for him. So it was a new experience for me. And they say you have to try everything once. This song came up pretty well, and it was my first, because first time I was doing a song locally. A full, well, you could call it a full local production, saving except for months right across the water city. They're one of us, you know, Montreal and Antigua, one and the same. So that was my first experience working with locals, doing the song locally. And it, it was a different experience. And it was all because of Dr. Ramsey. But I can say the project came out really fine. I made it to the finals for the independence competition that year. And that, that was our first project. So come home, come home, come home for independence. Come let me jump and dance. Let me jump and dance. We may not know just the way it's began, but we surely know the mode of transmission. Well, you know, Dr. Ramsey's an advocate for, for AIDS. I believe he won some prestigious award for, you know, the fight against AIDS. And he wrote that song for Over Mighty Zero, of course. So. He died, and uh, it was a sad occasion to hear him singing that song, Protect Yourself, and he died shortly after. If it turns out to be my last song, let the message deliver on the first disease of mankind, where the cure is so hard to find. I really get to a lot of sentimental when I hear that song, you know? Because that was a real, true inner person speaking there, you know? And for Dr. Prince Ramsey to, to get that deep into, you know, the feeling of one soul to put it on paper, you know, for him to sing it like that was really, really phenomenal. And I tell you that it's a song that will go down forever and ever. Protect yourself. It was a warning, it was an advice, and it was love coming out of it too.
When I left Montserrat, I, I used to win there, you know, um, I was a top Calypsonian in Montserrat. But the volcano, um, you know, destroyed the whole process of um, music and so forth. So when I got here, I was struggling a bit to get into the Antigua competition. So when, when I got to meet, meet Dr. Ramsey, I just entered the Calypso competition in 2001. And uh, that's, when, that's, that, that, that's when my career kicked off in Antigua in 2001. And that's how I get into you know, the whole music line and competing and so forth. To encourage children to smoke ganja. That is corruption, I tell you. The, 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 I think the following year, he, um, I went into the independence competition. I think it was the 21st, and he wrote for me, and I won. Now you have reached 21. Congratulations. My conscience cries out. Can you hear it? Earning to be a part of it. Oh, yeah. The following year after that, I got first runner up, and he's been doing music for me. Um, on and on, he will send me a song and see if I like it, and you know, we'll you know, correspond. I, I, like, I like working with Doc because he listens. He understands, he tries to understand you when he's working with you, and he doesn't like putting pressure on you. He likes you to be comfortable. So he will call and ask you, um, is that okay? Um, you want any changes? And so forth, you know, and, um, you know, and he likes rivalry too. I think he set me up one year when he gave Blade the song Capture the Beer and he called me and told me, um, let's have a little fun now. Um, I'm going to send you something to answer back. So he wrote the song about me and then sent me a song to answer back. <laughs> come capture the beer, capture the beer, spreading panic everywhere here top. Eddie Mello, Richie Francis, call the pan man and the one man dead. Capture the beer, capture the beer. Spreading panic everywhere, right on the carnival stage. The bass is in all his ways. Only blade can take a chance when the beer starts to prance. Doing his a new one. Capture the beer, capture the beer. When I look at the lyrics that he gave me and the lyrics that he gave Blade, I wasn't too happy. Mine was very mild, you know. They were just touching the surface, but Blade went deep. <laughs> And I wasn't happy. And I said to him, Doc, I'm not happy, you know, I'm going re to rearrange some of these lyrics, you know. And he said, okay, do what you must. I know you, you love your cousin, so do what you must. And I did. I got me blows, you know, but I was happy with what I sent back at Blade. <laughs> you know, I, I wrote the song, he wrote the song, um, Can't Cage Me, you know, and um, I changed around some of the lyrics to suit. Because, you know, Doc now got into the cousin and the kind of, harsh, you know, fire, fire that I would put on the blade. But he set me up because he told me it was just a friendly thing and it turned out to be real, real, real serious. Blade took it serious and he started harassing me and, you know, and I just said to myself, okay, all right. But I was planning for the next year, but he didn't come. He, won. <laughs> he didn't come the next year, he back out because they caught me off guard, you know. But he was good, he was all good. Like I said, he helped you to raise your game and you know, have fun at the same time. This hungry grizzly go be your worst nightmare. All them Californians helping bled on the beer. Tell them, ha! Huh. Tell the blunt of bled, he better try hunt a mere, not me, ha! Huh. Cause I know about his conspiracy. Running off him out, that he go capture me. But when he attack, he better be prepared to get some slap from the big bad bear. Them jumpy crab Calypsonians who looking for trouble. Tell them, that is me, that is me, that is me. Call back in your hall. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. Principal again. Oh, la 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 la. Oh, la, la, la. The circumstances on which I meet Mr. Prince, Dr. Prince Ramsey is um, 
a very strange one, I must say. Um, I actually, I'm a telephone technician at APU, and I was working in the area. And Dr. Ramsey apparently was having a lot of problems, internal problems with his telephone. Um, his, his electrician could not get it solved, so uh, I actually offered my service. I got it solved for him, and surprisingly, Dr. Ramsey called me one day and he said, Dr. Principal, um, I'm going to write two songs for you. And to be honest, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that he did. Um, well, the two songs that he did for me was, um, one was I Believe, which um, actually got the best social commentary last year. I believe our cup is overflowing, the candle of hope is still glowing. Anything we conceive, we can achieve. I believe, yes, I believe. And the other one was World Crisis. Two very good songs. And, um, you know, I really enjoyed doing them. So, you know, it was good for me. Until we focus more on people and less on weaponry, the freedom we seek we will never see. Oh, la, 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 la. One of his passion was to have a song, one of his songs, sang in a competition in Trinidad about two, three years ago. King Panther actually sang a Dr. Ramsey song as he was defending his crown. He didn't win the competition again because usually in Trinidad it's very difficult to win two in a row, but the song went down very well. So I must say that was part of Dr. Ramsey's mission over the years, for not only writing for Antiguans, but also writing for persons throughout the Caribbean and of course I was glad to see that one of his songs made it to the big yard, the so-called big yard in Trinidad and Tobago. The richest man living and everyone in the top ten amass millions they could never spend they spend their lives chasing a fortune riches they cannot take past the tomb this man race always ends in a tie. The finish line is when they die. In that one thing is a must. Money the count is dust to dust. Money to approach the Calypso art form, uh, the Calypso production as an, for an album to approach it as a business. I learned that from Sir Prince because he, dealing with albums, he's very business-like. He go about getting the sponsorships and he format all the names, everything on paper, sketch everything out, get everything done months in advance of the production of the album. So I learned that you are to be on time, you are to treat the thing, the, um, Calypso new album production as a business and be as a businessman should. Be early, be on time. You have to have production for sale before release and that kind of stuff. He believes a lot in discipline. And even like working with him, it's, you know, you can't be late and, and the music coming out late and all that. Right after Christmas, you know, he'll throw us in a hotel with the arrangers and we, you know, have to start. There are quite a few Calypsoans that I've worked with and there are quite a few who have turned their back, backs in terms of, you know, helping and, and it's like, um, turn out to be they all for themselves. He's always quick to point out when he speaks with him. He said, if I were to tell you the story, he's been hoodwinked. He's been bad played by some artists in the past. It is the truth. The man has spent hundreds of thousands on some artists and when time comes for him to get his returns. And I'm not poking fingers, we're dealing with the truth here. I think that's what discourages him sometimes. Because I don't think Doc is trying to get rich off the Calypso. He just wants to be appreciated for what he did, you know. And I think if you make something, you're supposed to come and say, I'm Doc, 
um, what do you need? Because that's what I do. Whenever he works with me, I would go and say, um, what's your fee? And he will laugh. I say, he say just give me. I say, no, man. Give me an idea. What much do you want? And whatever he say, I will give it to him. Because that's the kind of man he is. He's not into it to get rich. He just wants to know that at the end of the day, Dr. Ramsey did that in Calypso. And he got, he, I think he, he, he gave me some stories from Calypso and from the past and, and some presently that have not treated him very kindly in terms of monetary contribution or give him the clout as to he did it and so forth. And the, the speculation that, oh, is not he right this and is not he right that. And, you know, it's a lot of disrespect, you know. But Doc have always been the most honest man and that I've never discouraged him because he sold his soul of Calypso. That he just kept going and going and going and working with artists and artists, whether or not they, they turn up to be profitable. Because for him, it was never for personal profits. It was ours for whoever he worked with. I'll give you a story about myself with him personally. 1989, I placed second runner-up. And when I went for the check, those days they give you $7,000. And I took the check to his office. And he said to me, Douglas, why are you bring this, man? I said, Doc, come in. Take away your one. He said, no, no, that is yours. And that same year, I was setting up a workshop. He still turned around and gave me money to build a workshop. So what can you say? You know what I mean? His contribution is priceless, you know? And he's really, really in love with Calypso, not by only words, but by his pocket. Yes. Now, remember I told you earlier that Dr. Ramsey is concerned about how much money I spend overseas and he thinks the money could be better spent here. The man soul of Calypso, once he him, he knows I'm going away. Pan man come for this. He's making a contribution. Now one would think that you know, the natural inclination would be, boy, you spend the money overseas, you think you should do it here. But he so wants to see the product completely. He so wants to have an input to make sure he contributes to that huge, huge, huge asset of ours called Calypso. That passion of his. That although we disagree fundamentally on the direction that I should take, he still makes a contribution. Now tell me if that doesn't speak to the measure of the man. Don't mess with this country, boy, you mess with me. How are you trying? In my estimation, he could have built 10, 20, 30 houses. But he chose to put his all into Calypso in terms of producing the music and ensuring the survival of Calypso, so I would say kudos to Dr. Ramsey. You know, he's done so much work. I mean, when you produce uh, albums year after year and not uh, seeing the benefit, not getting the reward, it shows a lot of heart, courage. In other words, he's a great man because he's not doing it for the money, because he's not making any money. And for be, to, to be doing it for the past uh, 36 years or so, you know, I mean, year after year, whether it's uh, Onion or The Beer or Soul or Progress or Zero, you know, he worked with some ladies out or out here, Lady Smooth, even stop out of Barbuda and not getting the reward, but he just, he's doing it for the love of Calypso, for the art form. And like I said, there's nothing to describe Dr. Ramsey, you know, for the work and the contribution he has done for the art form for Calypso, for Calypsonians here in Antigua Barbuda. And I think that it's out of the love for the art form and his background, where he's from. You know, a poor country boy come to town, he made it well. And, and I think it's a way of giving back, giving back to the people. So with that, he, he helps people like me in Short Shirt and Onion and, and all the others, Douglas and Zakari and it's a lot of us he helped. And I am glad that I have this privilege to say thanks to Dr. Prince Ramsey for what he has done for me and what he has done for the art form, Calypso, Soka. To be an Antiguan, you should be proud. Oh, how I love this country, shouting out loud. When you 
sustento. 